Hello, my name's Kelly, and welcome to The Paper Artiste. Uh, today we're going to do a small tutorial on photo cubes, and very easy project. Um, it just, it's a little time consuming, but it you can have it done in two days. Um, what you will need, these are your supplies over here. Um, you will need glues. Um, I'm using a combination of Eileen's Tacky Glue, Matte Medium, and Mod Podge. So whatever glue that you're comfortable with, you can use that. Um, you need some workative, workable fixative, and that is for your pictures. And I'll explain that uh, when we get to pictures. Um, you're going to need stains. Uh, these are your uh, three stains. Um, that I used and I'll show you examples. One is just acrylic paint, um, wood tint and distress ink. Paint brushes, you'll need um, some old paint brushes. Um, you'll need a sharp X-Acto knife if you're going to do the uh, puzzle piece. <coughs> Sandpaper, um, this is a palm sander. It's just a block of wood with some um, sandpaper around it <coughs> excuse me uh, rubber gloves if you don't want to get your hands all dirty uh, some kind of a table protector I use uh, wax paper um, it just does good uh, you'll need some rags uh, you know stuff to wipe with um, your wood your what you're going to need is Wood. These here are four by fours that my husband got at the um, Home Depot. Um, technically, though, <laughs> they are only three and a half by three and a half. But um, so keep that in mind when you go to do your pictures. So uh, the wood uh, on it, um, you can get them sanded or they come straight. Um, these are some examples. This is what it looks like before you sand it. Um, you see how straight they are. So um, you can decide whether you want to sand yours down or not. And then um, the grain part. See how this is the grain part? This is the side and this is the grain. These become very, very um, dry. And so you need to put down a little protectant on it. I just uh, use a little bit of watered down glue and then I put it on both sides because if you don't, then uh, you will get, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the glue doesn't soak into the paper. And um, so what happens is it, it'll bubble. So you, you need to do that um, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, also, uh, pictures, um, you need to think about inkjet versus laser. Uh, inkjet, the ink will move on the paper when you put water soluble stuff like glue, stain, whatever. So you got to remember that you have to put the workable fix it. If you don't have this, um, just use uh, clear spray paint, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, then you want to concentrate on the details, but the inkjet versus the laser, if you have a laser printer, then you don't have to worry about it because the, the ink is permanent on it. It won't move or smear around, but on an inkjet, um, it will. <clears throat> so, uh, this is it this one? This particular one, you can't even tell. I sprayed this one, and so all you really have to do is, if you get the low odor one, um, you should really do this outside. You just get, you just spray it, just like that, and you let it dry, and boom, there you are. You've got it. Um, also, uh, then you have to measure them to get them to fit on the. Um, cube. So uh, it's good to have a pair of scissors or uh, one of these handy dandy things, um, paper cutter. Um, and then you can measure. I just keep measuring until I get it right. 
um, and then you just keep cutting and cutting and cutting until you get the right size on there. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started and um, we'll do a quick run through. Um, to begin with, what you first want to do with your blocks is I've already done these. I went out with a sander and here is my sander <laughs> and I sanded the corners off. Okay, so then after I did that, I took a towel and I wiped them, wiped it down real good. Okay, then after that, you take a little bit of glue and some water, like so. And let's see, if we'll use this one. Okay, one thing I have to say for Eileen's glue, man, it glues. So <laughs> I finally struggled and got the lid off of it. I put a little bit of water in with the glue just to just so it's not so thick. And then I just swish it around, kind of break it up, and because it doesn't have to be super glued. It just needs to have like a wash on it. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to take these and you're going to just give it a glue. Just like that. I don't know if you can see. And you're just going to give it a glue like that. And you're going to do the top and the bottom. And you got to hold it up. Don't be like me, set it down on the wet side. Luckily for me, I set it down on the uh, wax paper. So there we go. So that, that helps keep um, the glue from soaking in and warping the paper. Okay, and then you let that dry. It doesn't take long to dry. Um, and you just put that down and let that dry. Then, um, I just, I always keep my pink brush in the water. Okay, so then after that dries, then you're going to go back and, I forget, okay, it's this one I have done. Um, you're going to stain it. So, what you want to do is you pick the stain that you want to do. Uh, this particular one, um, I used acrylic paint. You just um, put it in the dish, add a little water, and you paint over it. And then each time that you paint it, um, it gets darker. So this here is two coats. I have one on here, and then I put another one on. So, um, but like I said, I particularly like the corners to be sanded. So I'm not going to use this one until I sand it down. See how it's sanded on the in-between. Okay, so uh, that's what the acrylic looks like. Um, I had some shiny stuff. Here's this one. Um, this is what that one looks like. It's um, color wash tint. You can get this at um, jo, jo, uh, Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, any of those. You just look in the wood aisle, and this is there. It's 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 really inexpensive. Um, this I got at Wally World for fifty cents. Um, so the other kind of uh, stain that I use is um, I like to use the Distress Ink. Um, it gives it a rich rich color if you can see that um this one here is uh, crushed olive and um, it just gives it a nice rich color this one here is um vintage photo and um it gives it a nice nice color now one thing about um this is if you don't let the ink dry and you go and you put your uh glue on it it will tint your paper but that's okay i like the patina on i like the patina on the on that how it gets it like that so i'll show you that so over here so those are your three stains you have a color tint wash 
you can use acrylic paint or you can use the um, Distress ink. And I'll show you how that works on this. I'm going to use a little bit of this and I'm going to just rub it right on there just like that. Um, you don't really have to do the inside, you know, the square part, because you're not going to see that. So, um, oh, see, this one here isn't really sanded, so I'm going to take the palm sander, probably jiggling you all over the place, and just sand that down a little bit. This one here is a little... <laughs> Thought I sanded these. Might have been when the paper broke. <laughs> so then you get it all sanded down to where you want it. Okay, and then back to this. This is if this would be a good time to wear your rubber gloves. Um, if you were if you didn't want stains all over you. So I am going to put those on the corner like that. And just like so. And then I go through and I have an applicator here. And then I just kind of work it in. Kind of work it in. And this is my stain. So we're going to keep going. And that's basically how you do it. You just kind of rub it in. Take a little spongy thing. Blend it in a little bit. Get the corners real good. Because, you know, you can go back. You're going to go back and uh, with the details, you're going to go back and do a little blending with it too as well. So that is doing, looking pretty good. And... Just... Giving it some character. Okay. Like I said, and that's wild honey. Then you can actually, you can blend all of these if you want. So you can then go in and put the brown on top of that. And, um... If, it, if it's too orange for you, that's almost too orange for me. Uh, okay. Anyway, so there's that. Now, you can get the woods in several different sizes. Um, these here are um, supposedly two-by-twos. But when you measure them, they're like... <clears throat> an inch and three quarters. So anyway, you can put those together and do basically the same thing with this, okay? Um, you can put one whole picture on here like this and then cut it and then um, do the, the puzzle piece type or you can put a separate picture for each square. Now, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna need 24 pictures because each cube takes six pictures, okay? So if you're gonna do just the whole thing and cut it, then you will only need six pictures. But if you're gonna do the small ones and do all separate individual pictures, it makes a super cute um, gift. Um, then you'll need 24 pictures. Great way to use up your pictures. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about the paper while we're here. Um, okay, so <laughs> I had to go find it. Um, I, I use this a lot. You can find this anywhere. You can find this Wally, um, Walmart, Target, Staples. It is a premium cardstock. It's 110 pounds. It's thick, but it, it's beautiful paper because it takes great, the print, printing takes great, um, pictures and it just prints very wonderful on it. Um, of course, you also have to set your printer for um, the paper. Um, I use matte 
illustration and um, I also use high quality uh, printing uh, but it's it's just wonderful paper so if you can get the card stock get the card stock I, I wouldn't recommend using copy paper because mm, uh, the regular copy paper is really thin and um, you will be able to see the stain through it and you'll be able to see the grain through the paper. It's Copy paper is almost like equivalent to tissue paper when you're working with uh, solubles and <clears throat> so you don't want to um, really use copy paper but if you have nothing else give it a go it you know what it might just come out better than you think so now i'm going to work on the pictures i'm going to go ahead and put these gloves on because i don't want to get my pictures all messed up um so uh now what we're going to do is we're going to measure uh the pictures to put on here um, and I'm going to use my handy dandy uh, paper cutter. So you kind of just put it on there and you kind of just go with it and just do the best that you can. And you're going to trim these down anyway. So just to give you, this is just to give you an example how this actually works in real time. You could leave a, a border on it if you wanted to. Um, I myself don't care for the borders. So now I'm gonna put it on here and I'm gonna kind of look at it. So I know, to, I know that I'm gonna to have to trim off some pieces. So I'm gonna trim down and trim down. And see, that's going to work nice I because I don't want the paper to go over the sides. So now I'm going to take a chunk off the bottom. And we're going to take that border off the top. And we'll see how much more that we need. I tried measuring these. And honestly, it it each block is different depending on how you're sanding it. So... Here nor there. So, good deal. I'm going to cut a little bit of our pigtails off. And perfect. Now you could round your corners if you want. This particular one, I'm not going to do it. Now, this cardstock is pretty thick. So if you can see that, <clears throat> I like to uh, color it with this distress ink because um, it keeps it doesn't show the white I have a thing about stark white okay so there we go so then it kind of goes on there so now I'm going to glue it down um, so you can use any kind of glue that you want I usually use a little bit of the tacky glue first and then I just kind of glue it down like so. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of rub this in so it's, uh, it's kind of smooth. And you can wiggle it on there and that'll you won't give it any bumps. And then sticking that on there. I'm going to use a clean rag so I don't get fingerprints all over it. And I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth until it's on there really good. And then I'm going to give it a want to kind of make sure that it's on there. Now keep in mind if you're using the stain before it dries like I'm doing right here there's a good chance that it'll go on there. So then ta-da where's my lid? That's on there. Then you know you do as much all the way around as much as you can. Um, and then um, and I add a little bit of this 
Let me clean off my brush here. It's got a little glue on there, but that's all right. And then I add a little bit of this matte medium on top. You really don't have to because we're going to put Mod Podge on it. But um, if you remember, I was telling you about the patina. So this, if I rub it a little bit, see how it's getting the patina gets on there? So I kind of want to give it that sepia look. So, and there it is. Just to give it a little um, antique -y look. Okay. And now we'll set that off to the side and we'll let it dry. So there that is. That's and you just keep doing that until you get them all done. So when you get to the point where you get them all done, then you can take the Mod Podge and put it on to um, protect it. Um, the matte medium should protect it too, but I kind of like um, <laughs> I can't get any of my glues open. I kind of like the Mod Podge look, even though this says matte. You know, it, it doesn't get real glossy. If you'd like glossy, you could probably use glossy. But we'll put this on top. And it kind of just seals it and makes it easier for the person to dust. So, seals in all those edges. And then I just kind of pick it up and keep going. Till it's all done and sometimes you just have to let it sit and dry before you can get to the other parts of it see like I'm I'm down to this I'm gonna let this dry this doesn't take long to dry it takes about 15 minutes if that and then I will come back and do the other sides of this Okay, so we'll put that one over here. We'll actually just set that one up there. And those ones there, I need to, to finish too. So I will do that off camera. Now, um, same steps. So here, I bought this um, little particular uh, set of blocks. I got these at the uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, there's 36 pieces of wood on here. So what I did was I took six pictures and I glued them on the whole, as you can see, the whole picture. Then I went and I took a sharp knife and um, you'll see in the other sections how I was cutting them. And then when you cut them off, um, you they, it turns into a puzzle. Uh, but don't forget to keep the rubber bands on it, because if you don't, you'll be building the puzzle more than you know. So this actually came out really cute. And um, it, like I said, it's tedious. It took me two days um, of cutting really sharp pieces. <laughs> Little, it's tedious is what I'm trying to say, but it was fun. But you can do the same thing with the, the two by twos. So you can um, go in and, like I said, put them on there and it makes it like a little puzzle. Now, um, just so you know, um, you don't have to just, just use pictures. If you wanted to use something more, um, you can use just regular cardstock paper. Um, you could put uh, like decorative paper on there and, you know, put words on there that says, I love you or so on and so forth. So you don't have to just use pictures. You can use, um, a little bit of everything on there. All right. So let's go over the supplies one more last time. Your glues, PVA. Um, when I say PVA, that means, uh, tacky glue. Um, Eileen's is the best because it's flexible you can use school glue, you know, it's not going to matter because you're going to seal it anyway. Uh, workable fixative. Um, you actually need to put 
spray that on there so it doesn't smear uh, your pictures um, unless you have a laser printer. Uh, stains, and I went through that with you. Don't forget a sharp knife to cut your little pieces. Sandpaper, so you can uh, do the edges. Uh, rubber gloves, so you don't get hands like this. Uh, rags, table protector, so your table doesn't get like this. And your wood, don't forget to, um, see this is already dry. So um, I can actually turn this over and do the other side on that. So don't forget to, you know, seal your ends um, of your wood. And don't forget to sand before you put your pictures on. Um, now I have done both. Um, I went back and sanded some of it. I don't have those those particular ones that I did, but they actually came out really good because I sanded some of the paper off of it. Um, so it actually came out and looked really good. Um, then you're going to want to stain your um, wood. I mean, you can actually go out and get, you know, professional stain if you want. Um, I'm just, these were just suggestions for you. Um, economical. And um, <clears throat> so you stain it and let it dry. Uh, usually the stains dry pretty fast. These ones do anyway. The acrylic and this, they dry really fast, like in 15 minutes or so. So then um, <clears throat> I can't think of anything else that I need to tell you. Uh, like I said, they make great gifts. And uh, that's it. Um that's all. Thank you for watching. And um, I hope you were inspired to create some neat stuff with your photos. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so now all the pieces have been separated and sanded. So now what you need to do is you need to turn them over all in one swoop, all the same way. So the pictures stay in order. And as you can see, I have numbered them because <laughs> there's been many a times that I have scattered them all over the place. So, so now, oh, see what I mean? <clears throat> and this is where it comes in handy to put the gum bands on them. I have an issue here. This one is not right. Oh, yes, it is. Now I'm going to have to look. This is real time. <laughs> I have an issue with this one. I got it out of order. So let's check it out and see. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure how this is supposed to go, but I think it's supposed to go like this. And... That's the way it goes. Okay, so we need it to put it up number-wise. Yep, okay. Hence the reason why you should definitely, definitely number these babies. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each one of these blocks because I find that it's easier to do it that way than to put the glue on each piece because I tend to glue the blocks together and it makes it hard to get them apart. So doing it this way is making it much easier. Now, did I say that this was fiddly? This is really fiddly and tedious, but it's not a bad way to spend a winter afternoon creating a fun little puzzle for family and friends. I think my husband will like this because he likes to put together jigsaw puzzles. So this will be right up his alley. Yeah, that's all done. Okay. Now, we'll go ahead and put the card on there. And we're going to squish it around. Make sure it's on there good. And now, I'm going to flip it over. And 
push it down this way because they're kind of uneven. But that is all nice and ready. Then we'll go to the next step. This is picture number three. Okay.